Hi guys, it was an epic fail today. Bye. Hi. You're probably wondering how we got to this point so far. Let me go ahead and rewind just a little bit so you can get some actual details on what in the world is going on. Damn it, I think I rewound too far. So I had an idea of wanting to create a video that is centered around creating your own outdoor studio setup due to the fact that it's getting warm outside, summer is just around the corner, and I wanted folks to be able to have an alternative to booking studios within like their specific area. So I thought I'd make a video that was centered around that. Everyone isn't made of money, and of course being a teacher, I know that firsthand, but I wanted to really just create a video that had the aspect of, hey, you can do your own like DIY setup outside. Um, you know, you get a couple backdrop stands, you know, a nice little $15 backdrop and, you know, really just create some photos on the fly. Get a couple props we place outside, a little mini stool. You could pick those up from Walmart or anywhere. So we had all this stuff with us for the shoot. Uh, we even had Hetzel, she agreed to help out with the session again. If you didn't check out our last video where we did cinematic portraits, the link to that is somewhere at the top of the video here. And yeah, man, we were ready. We were down to go ahead and make this concept work. But a couple of things that we didn't take into account for for this day. Well, it was supposed to be actually bright, sunny and about 70 degrees outside. Um, the day of the shoot, it was a little bit rainy. It had literally just rained before we got there. The weather was around 56 or so, and the wind was blowing, as you can hear on these audio clips right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, we might need to stay since the other direction. So not only was that a little bit discouraging, but our backdrop stand ended up snapping due to the force of the wind as we were setting it up. So that was a no-go as well. And from that point, guys, it was just, it was complete chaos. And I really honestly just wanted to scrap the whole thing, call it off and go home. But the pride within me told myself that I can make this work regardless of if we even have this concept or not. I know we all been there and we had a specific concept in mind that we are super excited to just really bring to life. And then when you get there, literally nothing works. So I was at that point and like I said, but I'm not a quitter. So we, we made it work and we pretty much ditched the entirety of the concept itself of creating your outside backdrop and just took regular portraits using the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2, as well as a couple rolls of Fuji Color 400H and uh, some Kodak Portrait 400 as well. It was quite cloudy outside, so we went ahead and started with the Fuji Color 400H and went out into the open field portion of the park to get some shots. I also don't usually shoot at parks because it's just a lot of open area, uh, unless I'm doing something really specific, but I don't, I don't shoot out at uh, parks unless I have a really specific concept in mind, hence the backdrop idea. But again, well, I digress. So we went out into the open section of the park and just shot some portraits with the Fuji Color 408 film stock. And to be honest, I did not really enjoy these first set of photos. I actually turned a bunch of them into black and white, but because I promised I'd share the good and the bad of the film journey, I'm displaying a couple of those images on the screen right now. And then you'll also see what they look like when I turn them into a black and white image. things I've read on Fuji Color 400H is extremely true. If you're shooting at a location that does not let in a lot of light, some of your images will be a little muddy if you did not try to overexpose the image. I did rate this first roll at the 400 box speed. And again, it was an overcast day and there wasn't much light coming in at the time. So these images, again, I wasn't really a huge fan of them in color, but when I turned them to black and white, they did look a little moody. 
you know, I could see kind of the shadows and the highlights uh, really mixed in well together. And I enjoyed the black and white version a lot more than I did the color. Hetzo then went to go change it to her other outfit. And I told myself I was going to rate the next roll of Fuji Color 400 to be around a 200 ISO just to overexpose and let more light in due to the fact that it was an overcast day at this point. It was rainy, like I said, before we got to the shoot, so we had to compensate. I'm also shooting around a f2.8 aperture on the 110 Mia lens. Just a small disclosure, I love that lens so much. I also have the 180 that I shot for my first ever film shoot with Kia um, a month and a half or so ago when the camera first arrived, and I haven't even put that lens back on the camera ever since using the 110 f 2.8 lens. So my initial thoughts getting these back from the film lab, you can see right off the bat that when you overexpose Fuji Color 400H just a tad bit, the colors are a lot more vibrant than when you don't do it. Um, I'm probably going to do that a lot more going forward. I mean, you can see the greens in the background are extremely rich. The blues look nice. Her pink bandana is really popping as well. In all honesty, this second roll made up for a lot of the issues that happened earlier on when trying to set up for the initial backdrop outdoor studio shoot. Um, and of course, to these couple images I'm sharing on the screen right now, I saw them uh, from the second roll and thought they'd probably look really, really good in black and white and more of that moody aspect that fits in with the cloudy overcast day. Yes, I could have shot with some black and white film, but I left it all at home because I thought this was gonna be a nice, sunny, fantastic day. And finally, before we froze half to death due to that high wind chill, I went ahead and popped in some Portra 400 inside of the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 and got some last minute portraits um, you know, I maybe should have rated this a little bit lower as well for more of that overexposed look. I'll definitely do that next time, uh, anytime there's an overcast day. But uh, I did rate this at the straight up box speed of 400. And again, the images aren't bad. They just don't look like how the second roll of Fuji Color 400 is. But no, honestly, I don't think a lot of film socks look like the Fuji Color 400 age line i'm probably going to go buy a couple more boxes because that last roll that i used really got me like super excited on what the summer could really bring when it's sunny and light outside so um but anyways the portrait 400 photos turned out pretty decent i kind of like the different angles that i got on them some high angles some low angles um and the colors aren't horribly bad it's just i wish i would have maybe overexposed it a little bit to let more light in and see what uh, other images could have came from it. I even let Hetzel play around with the Mamiya and take a portrait of me. I'm not a model by any stretch of the imagination, but this picture did signify to me that for shoots like this, where it's overcast and I'm using a specific film stock that's like 400 and lower, I need to push it and rate it a little bit higher so that the skin tones can better reflect because even with the portrait 400, I this photo is extremely dark. Uh, especially the setting of where I took it at. It was dark, it was very grainy, so it just gives me a better insight of how I can adjust my settings to shoot with darker skin folks in the future, so it's a plus and a win for me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I mentioned, the first part of the shoot was an utter failure, but I do feel that the photos that came from it made up for that. So I will be making that outside studio setup shoot eventually. I gotta go buy a new backdrop and wait for the weather to be a little bit nicer, so it's coming soon. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button as well as click the subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. Thanks again. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.